Blessed Easter, friends. Blessed Easter, and uh, may God bless us on this Easter season. Easter is an event that comes at our life, and it brings us uh, hope, it brings us love, and it brings us joy. It's a celebration of what the Lord did for us. And this is the gist of the matter. Our Christianity at the center, foundation of our Christianity Easter story, resurrection story, is our story of victory, is our story of hope. And so we thank you, God, that you have given us another chance this year, 2022, to celebrate Easter, which is the day of our Lord's resurrection, bringing back life. And this is what the Lord did, bringing back life. Look back and see what happened on Good Friday. Look back and see what happened when he was arrested, what, when he was beaten, when he was scolded, when he was spat at, dirty things, hopelessness, despair, anguish on Friday. But listen to me, Sunday, Easter day is joy, is celebration, is running about with the good news. And so friends, this day comes as our celebration comes as a joy because the Lord Jesus Christ defeated the powers of death and brought us life. And so Easter story, resurrection story, is an extraordinary happening. Truly, Jesus is Lord. And we who confess him as Lord, it is at the center that we look at Jesus' resurrection, the empty tomb story. And this is what gives us meaning as Christians. You and I believe, confess the living Lord Jesus Christ who defeated the powers of death. And so, indeed, the Bible is full of examples. The Bible is full of stories which testify to the fact that Jesus died. Because all the four gospel writers state it very, very clearly. Matthew stated it very clearly. Mark stated it very clearly. Luke states it very clearly. And John states it very clearly. And what brings the matter to no doubt is the various number of witnesses that saw that Jesus died. They saw how he was arrested. They saw how he was beaten. They saw how they took him around. Caiaphas, the high priest, testifies to the fact that actually he suffered. Pontius Pilate tests to the fact that Jesus was beaten and taken to him. Herod himself and several of these other leaders actually testify to the fact. The soldiers that mocked him, that beat him. Okay, how about Peter, the disciple who denied him? Okay, how about Judas Iscariot who betrayed him. How about the women that cried at the tomb? Jesus indeed died and today, Sunday, he rose from the dead. And so the guards at the day of the resurrection in Matthew chapter 28 were overwhelmed with the earthquake. They, because the earthquake, the angels came from heaven and roared. And what happened? the stone that they put at the entrance was rolled away by itself. And the Bible talks about angels coming down to do that ministry, that Jesus was lifted out of the tomb, walking alive and bringing back hope to the hopeless people that had believed in him. And so the earthquake shook the earth, and that one is also testimony that Jesus indeed died and Jesus indeed was buried Angel coming from heaven is also testimony that this happened. This causing extraordinary happenings and the Lord Jesus Christ proves to the world that he's the Lord, he's the king, he defeats all the powers of the enemy and that's the death. And so Jesus had been executed by the most dangerous regimes in the world. And these were really dangerous people because um, when they came to, to, to judge him before their laws before their, you know, the witnesses, 
there was actually there was no evidence that incriminated him for that offense that led to death. But listen to me. Jesus said that what happened to him also happens to his people. And so he gives us an example that there is innocent suffering. But even when it is innocent suffering, friends, this Easter story tells us that actually you suffer today, tomorrow God provides a way out. We can say amen to that. You see, Jesus suffers innocently. They did whatever they did to him, but the Bible says that at the end it was victory. So his resurrection is a triumphant story. It is a victory story. It is a breakthrough. Whatever challenge that was, the nails could not hold him on the cross. The grave could not hold him underground. The huge stone that we read about in Mark, in Mark chapter 16, the huge stone that the women feared so much could not hold him there because it was an extraordinary happening. And so he defeated the powers of death. He defeated the nails. He was speared, pierced, but that could not stop him from being the king, from being the Lord. You know, everything that happened. And I want to thank God that even when all those things were happening, he looked like a mere man falling down many times, crying many times, you know, groaning many times, but that not take away the lordship from him. Sunday story is victory. He proves to the world, he proves to everyone that there is life. He proves that there is life thereafter. And so friends, there are lessons that we can pick from this story. Now, Paul puts it in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 14, and Paul puts it very, very clearly, 15, 14, he puts it very, very clearly that this Lord, that if Christ had not been raised from the dead, then our preaching is in vain. And so it is the, the resurrection of Jesus Christ that gives us the hope, that gives us the strength. And you see, Jesus Christ has been preached over 2,000 years, remember? Because this is 2022, 2000, 2020, 2022. And you can imagine the time he died, around about AD 33, and the gospel has been preached and preached relentlessly, and people have moved on. And so it is what gives us the power. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15, Paul talks, talks about it, that it is the power that we receive. And so without the resurrection of Christ, our preaching and your believing and your faith is in vain. So Paul puts it very clearly that this resurrection story is our hope. This resurrection story is our power. This resurrection story is our might. And we move on like that. And so belief in Christ's resurrection is the foundation of our Christianity, is the foundation of our faith, because we believe in the Lord Jesus Christ who is alive. Now, let me mention about just three or four things that are fundamental in our Christian faith. One, that actually resurrection, Easter, tells us, or spells to us that despair is not our option. We are not meant to despair for a long time. Yes, you can despair. Suffering has come. Accusations have come. Beatings have come. We are all surviving in a world full of false accusations. Someone says this, another one says this, someone does this, another does this. To you, the person, you despair. But it is not our option. Our Lord Jesus Christ shows it to us that he was, you know, he was, he agonized so much. He was accused falsely. But the Bible says that on Easter Sunday, all was history. He had defeated all those powers of the enemy, false accusations, the nails, the beatings, the spittings, whatever they are, the accusations. He gives us that actually despair should not be your option, should not be your portion. Yes, you despair, you despair at the moment, but you remember to know that Jesus Christ gave us an example. So despair comes when things have gone bad when the things are not right, when the things are bad, you despair, you agonize, you worry, you suffer. But God restores. God changes things. God changes your human destiny. God gives, us, gives you 
a new beginning. A new beginning on Sunday morning. Easter is the new beginning. And may God give you a new beginning, my brother. May God give you a new beginning, my sister. May God give you a new beginning, new destiny. Even when there is despair at the first. But may God re- retrieve you. May God rejuvenate you. May God pick you up. He picked up Jesus Christ, his son. And Easter story is the story of picking up. And this is what we are saying. We can never be separated. Paul puts it in Romans chapter 8. We can never be separated. 8, 38, 39. Nothing can separate us. Not even death. Not even agony. Not even the sickness. Not even what? Now remain. Stick there. Stick there. Stick there. And may God will lift you up. Now point number two. That sin cannot can be overcome. Sin cannot overcome a believer. And we are talking about sin because it started from the beginning with our grandfather and grandmother, Adam and Eve. But Jesus came to deal with that. And this is the reason why he dies. And this is the reason why he suffers. This is the reason why he is beaten. This is the reason why he is nailed. He came to deal with human sin. And the resurrection is the total proof that actually Jesus came to deal with the sin and he rose, he defeated the powers of death. And so my brother, the resurrection is a proclamation of God's power. And may I proclaim the resurrection power in your life, that you declare him as Lord and Savior and that you continue moving on. It proves that God is an unstoppable force. God is unstoppable. He deals with the sin. He deals with the agony. He deals with the suffering. He deals with the sicknesses. He deals with death. And so he handles that situation. And so it is us, my brothers and sisters, to keep dedicating ourselves to him and say, God, here I am. Here I am, deal with my situation. Yes, God deals with our situations and he will deal with your situation because sin is not permanent and Jesus took away our sin. As we read in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21, Paul puts it, he took it away. And so we need to just align ourselves in the footsteps of our Lord Jesus Christ and we shall be declared uh, a, a generation of people that loves and serves God. And so my brother, my sister, Another thing, number three, is renewal is available. God revives things. God brings things back to life. Renewal is available. Revival is with you. And so you need to just align yourself in the arena of the Lord and so that his light will keep shining upon you. And this is the season to arise and shine. One of my favorite verses in the Bible, Isaiah chapter 60, to arise and shine because God renews. Now, when we look at what happened on Friday, the Good Friday, the beatings, the scourgings, the whatever they are, you know, it is now smiling, it's now laughing, it's now joy because it's alive. May he renew you, may he rejuvenate you, may he revive you, may he give you a new lease in life. And this is the point of Easter. And so renewed, we move, revived. We move, rejuvenated, we move. And so may this Easter story rejuvenate you in your service to God, to your church, to your family. Continue serving in your family, continue. Husband, keep there. Wife, keep there. Children, keep there. And all of you who are doing work, wherever, do it because actually God, in the Lord Jesus Christ, gives us new strength, gives us new power. Because serving him is power, serving him is wisdom, serving him is is knowledge. And so let us jubilate in the Lord Jesus Christ and don't relent, don't lose heart. Seek God always for your renewal, for your newness. And God desires that you serve him. And now number four is the grace is not, I mean the grave is not our final destination. The grave in Tana is what I'm meaning. The grave is not our final destination. You know, Jesus was buried there and Saturday night he was there. Friday night was there. Saturday night was there. Sunday, he rose. Sunday, he was up. Sunday, he was out. And this confirms to us what he had said in John chapter 14, verses 1 and 2, that okay, do not be alarmed. You know that in my father's house there are so many rooms and that he will come back and take us there. So my friends, that Jesus will come back, he defeats the powers of death. The grave is not our portion. Yes, when we die, we are buried there. When you die, you go to the soil there, but that is not your destiny. Many things happen, they want to bury us. They want to destroy us. But Jesus, this day's message is victory. This day's message is hope. This day's message is joy. And may God, bring back to life 
those opportunities, those chances, that life that was going to be lost, that marriage that was at the verge of collapsing, of dying, and he brings it back. Maybe your job is just hanging, but may God revive it. So it's a message, is a message of hope, bringing back that the Lord Jesus Christ uh, brings it to us today, in this year 2022, because he loves you, he cares about you, and the reason why he came to die on the cross for us. So the Easter message is hope. So be hopeful, my sister. The Easter message is joy. May the joy of the Lord be your strength, as Nehemiah puts it, that the joy of the Lord is our strength. Yes, despair can come. Sufferings can be there. Sickness can be there. Death can be there. Poverty can be there. And that's, those are moments of lack, lacking what to have, what to, what, what to eat. I mean, lots of things. Jobs may be lacking. And those of you who are having lots of whatever they are, we all have them. We all face the challenges in life. But Jesus' resurrection story is he cares about us. In Mark chapter 16, verses 1 to 3, the women were going to the tomb and they were asking the question, who will roll away the stone for us? Now listen, that before they could reach there, before they could touch, the stone had already been rolled away. And so I pray that God, who is our Father, will roll that stone of agony from your life, that stone of stress, that stone of anxiety, that stone of worry, and that he will give you, he will give you, that you just go in straight. I'm praying the same for everyone that God rolls away the stone for you. That he, like he did it for Mary's, that went there, because there were several Mary's, that I'm saying Mary's, and other women, and there was freshness coming. And Peter, who had denied him, came running to the same tomb and went out proclaiming. And Acts chapter 2 gives us the point that the man that had fallen, that had denied the Lord Jesus Christ, was preaching in power. And so may God give you the power. May God give you the strength. May God give you the renewal of your strength as a man, as a woman, as a child, and that you'll grow in the faith, in the knowledge and love of God. So this Easter story, continue being hopeful, continue being with the joy to serve the Lord, because the joy of the Lord is our strength. Jesus gives us the strength, and may he give you the strength. May he give me the strength so that you can move on and continue loving and serving him in this generation. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. <music>